Are you guys noticing a theme? I hadn't done an unboxing video in over a year, then I did one last week. And now one this week. Don't let the box fool you, since I have 70 Gibsons all over the studio. I'm not an Epiphone guy, but I opened up my heart to this Epiphone. Which I played in Nashville, Tennessee, and I believe, and I'm gonna go on record as saying, that the Emily Wolf Sheridan is the best guitar that retails for under $900 on the planet. That's right, guys. I went to Nashville, Tennessee, to the Gibson garage, and they have all these Gibsons floating around on this conveyor belt. Beautiful, it's like, oh, sensory overload. And I'm at the garage, talking to my buddy Patrick. Awesome dude, go down there, he's got the big dime bag Daryl beard and the hat, and he'll help you. Go down to the Gibson garage and ask for Patrick. And on the stage, over yonder, I see this white guitar and it didn't have a Gibson headstock, it had an Epiphone headstock. And I look over there, I'm like, what's that? Oh, that's the Emily Wolf Sheridan. That doesn't look just like a Sheridan to me, that's a crazy looking guitar. And I went and picked it up, and I went over to the back room, and I played it, and it was absolutely magical. So magical, that even being in a room with a bunch of 1959 reissues and all this other stuff, I wanted to play this guitar, because it just called. And then I found out, it's $899. What? So I did the unthinkable. I actually bought it. That's right, I have 70 Gibsons. And I bought an Epiphone. Kind of reminded me of when they came out with the PRS SE for $850. I have all these core guitars over here. But there was something about this guitar that called to me. And even when I bought the more expensive Nebula, I still liked the Silver Sky from overseas better for 850 bucks. So who's to say with all the technology and all the stuff that's coming out nowadays, the Epiphone can't make an incredible guitar? Because listen, I come from a day where when you saw Epiphone, it meant Diet Gibson, not the days of Epiphone New York, when they were made here in the good US of A. Not from the days of Kalamazoo, when they were made here in the United States of America, again, in what's now the Heritage Factory. This is a new Epiphone. This is a new generation of high-end, dare I say, affordable guitars that almost anyone could buy. 899 bucks. Let's see what we got inside. You guys have to see this. Oh yeah. What? The I love it. They have a, a box within a box. And FYI, I only keep the box inside the box. This is cheaper to ship. And by the way, if you haven't seen my last video where I unboxed the Gibson Les Paul Elegant, go back and check it out. But one of the important things that you need to take from it, peace of mind, when you get new guitar day, is get to know your UPS, FedEx, or USPS guy. My guy, Arthur, always hooks me up. So today, I'm writing him, hey man, I just edited this video talking about how you're awesome and I, I can text you, I can get my guitar. Funny, <laughs> I'm getting a guitar today. And what does Arthur say to me? Hey, Benny, I'm not working today. Oh, all right, man, sorry to bother you on your day off. And then I get a message 20 minutes later. But the guy that's filling in for me is gonna be there between 1.30 and 2. Arthur, I knew I bought you those chocolates on Christmas for a reason. Gave you the Dunkin' Donuts card. So here we are. Thanks, Arthur. I now have this Epiphone. I threw my scissors over here because I didn't know I was done going through boxes. It's a box within a box, kind of like Edgar Allan Poe. It's a, it's a dream within a dream. What layer of Epiphone inception are we in right now? Uh, okay. Box numero dos. Ooh, ooh, 
Oh, I like you. Oh, feast your eyes on this, guys. So one of the things I really liked about the PRS SE was that it came with an unbelievable gig bag. And the Nebula also came with a gig bag, but it wasn't even as good as the SE gig bag. This is not just a gig bag. This is a hard shell Casey gig bag thing with plush. And looks like there's some case candy in here. It's got the badass Epiphone logo here, established in 1873. But for $900! You get a hard case. People complain with the new PRS, Miles Kennedy and the NS53, the Telecaster looking thing from Paul Reed Smith. They're complaining that it's over $3,000 for the guitar. Nah, I'm not mad about the fact that a Paul Reed Smith is over $3,000 for a Telecaster. I'm sure they engineered it and made it worth it. What I am mad about is don't sell me a $3,000 guitar and not give me a hard shell case. Wow. Ooh, I like it. It goes all the way around. It's even designed well. There she is, gents. There she is. This is the Emily Wolf Sheridan. And the first thing I noticed when I got up close with this thing was, look at the inlays, guys. They're, first off, as anyone knows from this channel, they're real mollusk. They're mother of pearl blocks. Like an ES-355, but notice there is a lightning bolt. Just like Angus Young done in abalone. So not one, but two types of mollusk. And look at that headstock. You have the real Sheridan headstock with the Carl Roberts kind of logo inlay, which by the way, in the 70s, there were some of these on, um, on, some, on the Gibson Carl Roberts, but it's done in real mother of pearl. This guitar is a mind screw for me because it's not just an Epiphone Sheridan. Obviously it looks like a 335, which is kind of what a Sheridan was from Epiphone, but it has these Trini Lopez style F holes, which you may recognize from the Dave Grohl model. Super cool. It's got this nice C-shaped mahogany neck, but one thing I noticed about it is it felt a little bit sh shorter, and I, sure enough, I checked the scale. It's not 24.75, it's 24.724. How'd you get the number 24.724 and go, I want that shorter scale, but it is. I don't hate it. You got this beautiful brush gold hardware looking stuff. You got this lock tone bridge, Grover, Rotomatic tuners, and then Feast your eyes on the back of this headstock. You have the Emily Wolf crest and her autograph. I had to turn off the lights because it was too bright. You got beautiful three piece binding on the neck. You got binding, looks like five piece around the back and the sides. It's a pressed maple top. So I don't know if that's maple poplar maple, which is what the ES-335 and most of the uh, pressed wood Gibson ES line, which stands for electric Spanish guitar. It feels fancy and expensive and I don't own other than one PRS an all white guitar and there's just something about having a white beauty that's amazing. It looks great, it feels great, but how does it sound? When I was over there I took this guitar out of the case and I went like and it was perfectly in tune when I opened it. That almost never happens and for me, it's like a good luck sign. It doesn't mean that like if a guitar comes out of tune, it's not good. But when you take a guitar out of the case and it's new and literally makes me happy. But just really quickly, let's just review. We have the Alnico 5 Magnet Classic Pro humbuckers from Epiphone in this thing that are supposed to be like vintage with a little bit of like a kind of a throatiness to them. Definitely rock solid over here. You have the Grover Rotomatic tuners, which I mean, they're awesome on everything. They last forever and they're super durable. The thing that's very interesting about this model too is that it has an Indian Laurel fretboard. Indian Laurel's kind of like something they're using in lieu of Rosewood. Indian Laurel, they've been using it for years on guitars. It just didn't have the popularity of Rosewood because Rosewood grows everywhere. But now that Rosewood has become harder and harder to get, here we have Indian Laurel. It's a lot more even looking. It's smoother than Rosewood, not a whole lot, but it has a real nice feel to it. Definitely no step down for Rosewood as far as I'm concerned. 
We are plugged into the Kemper. I got a Colonial 1.8 going right now. By the way, if you can hear my necklace hitting off the guitar, it doesn't matter. It's an Epiphone. I can... And I don't give a because it's an Epiphone. But I will say, I don't have the monitors cranked that much, and the acoustic properties of this guitar are awesome. Actually, the Indian Laurel tends to be a little bit brighter and snappier sounding than Rosewood, which is supposed to be a little bit warmer and more bass-y, as much as, you know, people argue that wood doesn't matter, and that even if the wood of the body matters, the fretboard wood doesn't matter. It all matters a little bit, it's just about how much does it matter. is intonated flawlessly. You know, the quality on Epiphone is absolutely ridiculous. I can't believe for $8.99, like this guitar has come set up honestly better than some of the high-end Gibsons I've encountered from the factory. This is what I expect if you buy a $4,000 or even $5,000 Gibson Les Paul Custom to be set up this way. The fret job on this is beautiful. <laughs> That's kind of how I judge guitars, you know? That's crazy. Okay, let's see if we can get some distortion going on this thing. I'm on a Van Halen 5153 Channel 3 patch. I can definitely hear a little bit of a mid-range honk on these humbuckers. They sound good, they sound great, but it's a, a kind, of, kind of a jangly honk. So I figured I'd put a little bit of delay on here. Emily says that she really wants people to connect to their instrument and that she really designed this with Epiphone to be a touring guitar that can withstand some pain, you know, maybe like your chain hitting it. One of the things I noticed is that these pickups are kind of hot and wild, and it makes sense considering the fact that Emily plays in drop C with a lot of fuzz. I actually got to see her at the Gibson Garage in Nashville, and she was positively rad. So if you get a chance, go online and look up Emily Wolf, the person that is responsible for this incredible instrument. <laughs> see where the butter is at on this thing.
I honestly can't believe how resonant and awesome this sounds. I can go on and on about the gajillion ply binding. I could go on about the ACDC style lightning bolt abalone inlays in the pearl blocks that you would see on an ES355. I could wax philosophic about the Trini Lopez F-holes. I absolutely love this old school Kalamazoo Sheridan headstock inlay with the vine and the flowers. It is so classy and cool and the fact that it's actually in a real mother of pearl just makes me happy. But at the end of the day, I will go 100% on record as saying that if you are gonna buy a guitar brand new for $899, you need a hard shell case. You need something that's gonna withstand the gigs that maybe you could pull it out and even though it's an Epiphone, might be a burst killer. If you need that guitar, all you need to do is call the wolf. Why don't you smash that subscribe button already?